on the air. Thank you. Welcome uh, to City Hall, Spokane, Washington, uh, where we will review um, the, the three wonderful designs that have been uh, prepared by uh, three different teams, local teams actually, for the King Cole Commemorative Project. I'd like to give you and the folks at home a brief introduction to the project and why we're doing this. Back in the early 1900s, industrial uh, improvements, if you want to call them that, uh, were being made in central Spokane. There was railways, there was in, uh, laundromats, there was filling stations and other items that uh, really cluttered up our downtown and kind of went against the grain of the original Olmsted uh, vision for our park system that was calling for really a, a beautiful gem of a park in downtown Spokane. Our, uh, this image here on the screen is of course Havermail Island, uh, which is in the center of Spokane. And you can see the railways there coming through the land. Uh, Double-decker railways even. Um, uh, trestles crossing uh, from here to there. Um, and then there was a vision come about 1973, a little bit before then, uh, folks uh, such as uh, Jim Cowles, um, Senator Warren Magnuson, uh, Scoop Jackson, and, and others, uh, Foley himself, and of course, King Cole, had a vision to transform downtown and Spokane into something bigger, something better. And they envisioned a a, a, a World's Fair, and they, they were able to pull it off. The World's Fair uh, took a tremendous amount of effort in that they were dealing with railroads and property owners and others that are typically very Im immovable entities. And they pushed and they drew different concepts and they sold this not only to the federal government but to the world and to their own people here in Spokane. They refined that plan and refined that plan until they finally came up with an environmentally uh, driven theme for our expo in 1974. They started to demolish those railways. They started to scrape the land of the ugliness that was there and they started to build. And they created something not only new and exciting for this little city, but also that was temporary, that could be removed and disassembled rather quickly in order to make this wonderful place that we call Riverfront Park, and it was done mainly and solely by King Cole. Here's a couple photos of Expo, as it was in 1974. It was a beautiful exposition. And then as it was stripped away, the, those improvements, then we were left with what we call Riverfront Park. Today is an extension of that vision. And we have a beautiful park that continuously reinvents itself. It has beautiful amenities and that welcomes people from all over the world. And it inspires folks as well toward the future and, toward, and, and for Spokane. It's built for our children as well as, as, as ourselves. Here's our US pavilion that was once covered in fabric, now it's covered in light. A beautiful carousel. and wonderful views. All these photos, by the way, the mass majority are by a wonderful uh, local photographer, John Moore. The Expo of 74 is coming up on its 50th anniversary. And we wanna honor those people that put forth the effort and the immense challenge 
of transforming this industrial area into a wonderful exposition and then what we now call our Central Park Riverfront Park. Hello. <laughs> Can anybody there hear us? We can't hear you. Chris? Would you mind addressing that, Karen? Hello? Hello, we hear you. We hear you. Nobody can hear you. Is that in the in the booth up Hi, front? Uh, hey, this is Paul. I, uh, Chris writes in the meeting. I, I'm texting him right now. Thank you. He said they're working on it. I can't hear what they're saying. Okay. Um, Thanks, Cole. Thank you. The King Cole Commemoration Project celebrates those folks who came together and pulled off this enormous event. And not only does, uh, do we want to celebrate the history of what they did, but we want to celebrate the inspiration that they left us with. And we want to inspire our children that this is something that whatever you actually want to do, what you need to do, what you feel you need to do, that you can do it. And it, and it is by this commemoration project that we want to inspire these folks, our children, our visitors, to go be above and beyond. The King Cole commemoration project begins with the King Cole Way, an inspirational um, pathway through the park that uh, has much interpretive signage and other elements that, that tell the story of, of Expo and how it began. And then it also has this anchor, a gateway, if you will, that in this photo is on your bottom right. It is currently the King Cole Bridge. And this is one of our major entries into Riverfront Park. It is the perfect spot to say welcome to Riverfront Park. Welcome to Spokane. Welcome to your future. We have several designers that are going to present to you today. And I know that I'm taking too much time, so I'm going to turn it over right away. But we have ALSC Architects with us today. We have Land Expressions here with their partner, Hazen Adele. Wonderful team. And then, without further ado, we also have the Burger Partnership, who's teamed with John Fleming, wonderful artist out of Seattle. And with that, I'm going to turn the mic over and the podium to John Fleming and Guy Michelson. And I'll help you get this uh, pulled up here. Perfect, that'd be dynamite. <clears throat> well, thanks, Barry, and uh, thanks for the summary as well. We are so excited to be here. Um, uh, we love this park, we love this city. Uh, I'm hoping you guys can hear us at this point at home. I was getting texts that you couldn't, but hopefully we are on now. Yeah, they, I'm texting Chris. Uh, they they should be aware of that. I'm okay. A little confused by their still. We're gonna we're gonna hope yeah. that they can hear us here. Start, start my over. timer. Um, can you hear us? Who's that? Nope. It is. And we need to start from the beginning. Yeah, we hope they'll start over. Cause we missed all of that. Now maybe they're, are they working on it? Oh, this one won't be. We can see them. Can you hear us now? Barely. And is it possible to see it on the side screens as well? Oh, it is on these good. Perfect. We'll see those. All right, technology. So smooth, so easy. All right, um, I'm Guy Michelson with the Burger Partnership. He's John Fleming. We will introduce ourselves a little more as we go through our slideshow. Um, for those of you at home who might not uh, know about this, this has been a process that's been going on for about three months, I think, since we started uh, meeting and talking with the King Cole Commemoration Project Committee. Um, 
And all of our slideshows have started with this slide because it's such a magical place. We keep coming back to how do we capture the magic of this, add to it, and not detract from it. Uh, and hopefully you'll see as we go through our slideshow that we think we've been able to do that. All right, let me use the arrows. slide, it was working earlier. Yeah. All right, what are we doing, just tapping it? Yeah. All right, so, smooth continues. Um, all right, so uh, I'm again with the Burger Partnership, some background, our firm has been involved with Riverfront uh, since 2015. Uh, we did the, we worked with the city to do the master plan for the whole park, and then led the projects of the Louf, the Howard Street Promenade, and the Pavilion. Uh, insanely proud of that. Um, and one of the things about the Pavilion, I think there's some very applicable lessons to the Pavilion and what we've been able to do there uh, and how people have responded to it and the project you're gonna see um, today from us. Um, and what it is is there's, there was a treasure that was always there, but it was kind of hidden in plain sight. Um, it was iconic from afar, but not really appreciated up close. Um, and we think that that's true with the King Cole Bridge as well. Oops. John? One of the key words that Barry used was inspirational. And so I'm showing, I'm starting off with a few examples of some iconic, inspirational, I hope, um, work that I've done in the past. Each one of these is, they're scattered around the West, Wyoming, Colorado. Washington State, and they're about that particular place. And so that's what we're trying here in Spokane for the Riverfront Park is something that is about King Cole, is about the bridge, is about this place in Spokane. Um, I believe they're all iconic in nature. Iconic mean unique to their site, something that registers in your head and you just can't forget it. So you come back to it each time. And all of these projects are about storytelling as well. Um, you can see some of the stories embedded in the artwork itself. I think uh, storytelling is something that's at the heart of what we love to do. Um, and there's so many ways you can do it. You can do it in temporary ways with decal and paint like we see in the blue. We can do it with interpretive signs and wayfinding. We can do it integral to structure like you see in the steel. And we can do it with crowdsourced content and making art out of it. And John, why don't you talk about the image on the right? Well, storytelling is extremely important to the artwork. Um, on the right is a project I did in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm not from Cedar Rapids, and so it's called Portraits of Iowa, and we invited the community to provide photographs as locals that uh, were about their experience in, in Iowa. And so 340 of these photographs embedded the artwork. And this was a way of giving the artwork to the community. The artwork is about the community and not about us. So I think they can become very proud about their contribution and how they helped shape that. And so we see that happening here in Spokane as well. So Barry did a great job of introducing King Cole and why this project matters. Um, and this project is a chance to not only honor the legacy of King Cole, but really to build on it. Because if there's the key to King Cole's legacy is he was very forward looking. He wasn't looking backwards. He was thinking about what's next. And so we want to have uh, a solution, an opportunity, a way to honor King Cole, but also to be very forward looking and not just looking towards the past. Um, he, was, he has this amazing legacy and and yet he was, from what we've read and understand, a fairly humble and, and it was about the idea, not about him. And one day I will learn how to advance this in the right direction. Um, so we love this picture. Uh, what is that legacy? What is the King Cole legacy? Well, the King Cole legacy is, as Barry was saying, uh, a riverfront claimed by industry for all the right reasons at the time. 
you can see about where the King Cole Bridge is. And then, of course, this is the immediate outcome, this amazing expo. But the real legacy is what we have today, this green heart to the city of Spokane and really to the whole region. And there again is this King Cole Bridge, which we think is amazing. So here's Havermill Island. Um, so we have the King Cole Bridge all the way on your, on your right. Um, it's been called the King Cole Bridge for a long time. Most people don't know it's called the King Cole Bridge we found. And if they do, too many people don't know who King Cole was. So that's what we need to reconcile and fix with this project. There's also King Cole Way. King Cole Way is a route. It exists actually on Havermill Island now. It's easy to miss it. It's not well marked. It doesn't seem to have a lot of um, purpose or storytelling involved. So what we're trying to do with this project is formalize King Cole Way as well as creating a gateway to the park. Well, if you're going to have a way that starts somewhere, it has to end somewhere. So one of the things we've learned through the process is our King Cole Way will end at the Adkinson theme stream because that is another legacy element of uh, the World's Fair and a great place to tell a story. Everything that starts has to have an end. And if you're coming the other way, that is the beginning of the King Cole Way and the bridge is the end. But King Cole Way is not just an extruded experience. There are moments that matter more. There's places for added storytelling. And where we think those are, are where there are um, still existing but reimagined elements of Expo. And that is at the Forest Pavilion and at the pavilion itself, a chance to sort of turn up the opportunity for storytelling. Zooming in a little bit, King Cole Bridge. Again, those two nodes at the Forest Pavilion and at the pavilion to tell a great story. We love this picture. This is actually from the city's Instagram feed. It was out a few months ago and I love this image. Um, this bridge is magical. Um, I think it's lost a little bit of its magic over the years. The lights don't work. It needs a little work. Um, and it's sort of the secret, maybe even the back way into the park. And yet it's this amazing feature. So there it is, there's this opportunity hiding in plain sight. How do we um, honor this legacy? How do we make it a forward looking legacy? And then how can we create a gateway to the park? Because believe it or not, people, we, we've seen it firsthand, people trying to figure out where Riverfront Park is as they walk by this bridge. So we really need to create a gateway. So we really think of it as King Cole Gateway, the bridge could be the artwork, could be this gateway experience. And so for the public, it could be meet me at the gateway, meet me at this wonderful entrance here. And we're creating this veil, this canopy that builds on the structure that's already there in an iconic way. It, um, it captures the grandeur. It's something you can see from, from afar. Let's see, just click here. Oh, sorry about that. And it, it picks up the experience around you, your movement across the bridge. It's made up of these mirrored finished stainless steel panels, which are constantly changing. You'll see yourself in these. You'll see the water. You'll see the change in the light as you move under this bridge. So it's a gateway experience. It's an iconic form. It's um, something that I think is memorable, you'll never forget. Go on to the next. There are similarities to the pavilion in its iconic form, but the differences are, I think it's the way it changes with your movement, it reflects your movement. It's about that particular place and how, how it's changing. I think it's good that it has these similarities because it also creates continuity with the rest of Waterfront Park. So one of the things I want to add here too is I think one of the things that's exciting about this reflectivity is all these reflective panels at different angles that as people move through, um, it'll, it'll, every time you move through it, it'll be a different experience. And really great artworks have this opportunity and it's rarely achieved 
where they can be this amazing icebreaker between different people who are sort of enjoying this wonder and delight, and they may be complete strangers, but because they're enjoying it together and sort of moving around and experience this, this reflection together, um, it sort of ties people together in a shared experience. And that's one of the things we think that the reflectivity here will provide. So whereas, for example, on the pavilion, those sails provide shade and form, on the bridge, they become an interactive element with people. These are a couple of examples of projects of mine that use these mirrored finished stainless steel panels. Um, and it is amazing how they interact with you. You can never really see them in the same way, and they catch you as you move, move by. So th this is a form that you're going to be a, a drawn to that's pulling you into the park. It's this iconic form. Changes by night, changes by day. It's constantly evolving. I think that's one of the important things about public art is that it's not stationary. It doesn't, you don't forget about it because it evolves over time and it evolves over time during the day and during the night. You know, one of the things I've learned over the years, my favorite lighting designer has trained me that most designers have a daytime bias. And so I've worked really hard to develop a nighttime bias and love to create spaces that are better at night than in the day. We actually think these are one of those. Remember that first, that historic picture we showed of this bridge. So imagine those lights restored and imagine something that casts shadow during the day being these shimmering pieces of light from all those lights on the columns at night. But it's not just that those are glowing. As you're walking over the bridge, they're gonna be reflecting that light like a lace back down onto the surface of the bridge deck. And so there would be this shadow pattern cast also by the canopy overhead. And we see that as something that can actually become an element that draws you along King Cole Way. It becomes the path generator. So this, what we're showing here would be this King Cole pathway that's guiding you through Waterfront Park. It's reminiscent Riverfront of the canopy Park. overhead. Riverfront. We got to call it by the right name. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. And so within those pixels or those blocks would be the story of King Cole Way. And this is where we would need your help, not as the outsider who confuses it with Waterfront Park rather than <laughs> Riverfront Park, but helping me and helping all of us to write what that story is. And so we're kind of just introducing the idea of, of embedding that pathway with, these, with the, the actual story that's your story. And I think something to drive home here is um, what you may be seeing are triangles, but if you start to look closely at the pattern, those triangles actually are abstractions of the hexagon of the World's Fair logo so that it can actually... The, the logo itself can live in there, it can be abstracted, and again, it's a way to tell these stories, and those stories can be about the past, they can be about history, they can be about King Cole, but we also dream of them being about the future and have the fingerprints of today's community as part of them. So if that's an example of our trail, here's how that lives physically. It starts at the bridge, there's a lot of content, and you can see it skinnies up. We literally have a thread along the entirety of the King Cole Way that you will follow, a surface applied graphic. But at those key points we've pointed out before, at King Cole Bridge, at the Forest Pavilion, at the Pavilion, and at the Theme Stream, we can actually blow up those storytelling moments into something far more robust and substantive. Also, a deliberate choice here. We are making a choice to tell our story in the horizontal plane because it can be really rich and compelling. And having worked on Riverfront and now having seen everyone re-fall in love with Riverfront, there is a temptation to endlessly add stuff to a beloved place. When we were hired, a huge amount of our job was stripping away years of piecemeal additions to the park. We want to be very thoughtful and careful not to add too much back into the park to, to create the very problem we started to solve in 2015. So we're messaging things very subtly on the ground. It is a scavenger hunt. It is a discovery. It is subtle. 
Uh, it can be painted on, it can be applied decals, it can be sandblasted on like you see in the bands here. And you only need to look at our work when we restored the, uh, the uh, rotary fountain that we have different messaging there. We have sandblasted tiles that are holding up and look great. We have inset bronze fish. Uh, and we have the giant, the giant rotary medallion. Those are all examples of subtle ways of telling stories that are robust and can stand the test of time. I'd like to add also it's a very natural way of guiding yourself along a path is reading where you're walking rather than looking, rather than looking up overhead. So I think we've kind of fed on that horizontal surface as a natural for a guide through the, through the park. We're kind of in a, in a beginning stage and we're gonna show you a few images of that process on past projects. This is in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, the final project on the left and some of the early sketches and modeling on the right. I finally got the click down, John. <laughs> I'll leave it up to you. This is a project I'm just finishing, just finished in um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You can see how it began with a sketch. This is about these wonderful live oak trees and then how it evolved into the computer rendering boxed in red on the lower right and the final piece that we installed just last week with this same mirrored finish reflective panel that also reacts to all the movement underneath. And then back full, cir circus to, full circle <laughs> to telling the story of the community. This is in Vail, Colorado for an elementary school and the artwork, these stories about their experience in Vail were written and then embellished in the artwork. So the artwork again becomes the community's artwork More of the same, this is working with communities to have the content, the community's content. So uh, as we were starting to dream, actually not as we were starting, as we've been digging in on this project, it took us back to this room in 2015 and out there in the gallery, we set up this board and we asked people for their memories, their thoughts on Riverfront Park uh, and this was it, this was in 2015. And the little nuggets of information we got profoundly shaped what we were able to do and really shaped the project. And so those fingerprints are on the project. And so we think there's this same opportunity with this project. So if you're at home, if you're on WebEx, you can scan this. We've set up a simple little three question survey. Uh, and then for people in the crowd, we've done collectible cards, these are worth, gonna be with a lot of money one day, so you're gonna probably wanna grab two or three. QR code, simple little survey monkey, three simple questions about, not what do you remember about Expo, because guess what, most people don't remember firsthand Expo. So what does Expo mean to you? What do you cherish about Riverfront? And what are your hope and aspirations for the future of not just Riverfront, and Spokane, because those are the kind of fingerprints, those are the little nuggets that we want to incorporate into this project and honor the King Cole legacy um, by yes, telling the story of King Cole and telling the story of the transition of this site and of this city, but also look at the next 50 years. And with that, I believe we are done. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh, thank you, Guy. You thank you, John. Yes, know. yes, I was just going to mention if there are any right questions away. from either online uh, or in the general audience, we have a, a microphone up front. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll give you a few minutes for that as uh, we invite Land Expressions to share, um, to come up and just prepare for your, your presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Thanks, Guy. Oh, and then also in the lobby, we do have comment cards too, and we welcome your thoughts um, on the different presentations today. Hi, 
this is, uh, I'm at home, uh, watching on home. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, my question is, um, uh, to ver the uh, folks that just presented how everything will perform in the uh, extreme weather uh, there in Spokane, both heat and snow, uh, the, some of the ideas that they presented are super cool, and I just wondered how they had in, kind of taken into consideration weather elements. Thanks. Well, I think in regard to the, the King Cole Gateway piece over the bridge, it's, again, the bridge is this natural raw steel that weathers beautifully. We can see how it's weathered over the years, and you can see that in some of the past artwork. The um, other material is this mirrored finished stainless steel that is not a plated material, it's stainless steel, and so it also is a natural for durability, for weatherability. It won't, the weather doesn't harm it. We've seen that with the projects in the heat of Arizona, as well as in the ice up here. You might. And, and, Great, thank you. And I just want to add too, I do think a key part is that King Cole Way. We need to, to assure people that if messaging is in the horizontal plane, that will perform over time. There's two ways that that can be done. One is it can be surficially applied, um, and that does come with the likelihood that in time it would need to be um, sort of repainted. Uh, the beauty of that is it's incredibly cost effective, A, to install it sooner than later, and B, it is really easy to continue to update it um, and, and renew it if we need to. And that update word isn't, isn't um, accidental because imagine we could actually curate this that the stories change over time that this project isn't locked in amber but if we have surface applied decals those could change every year they could change every three years imagine how cool it would be if every year there was a competition and 16 people had their i'm making this up haikus about riverfront selected to become part of the trail for the year so the idea of curating content is great but that content can also be made really permanent with those elements we talked about before, stone, bronze, pavers, et cetera. Thank you, very helpful. There's gotta be more than one question. No. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, just a few moments and we'll set up land expressions. Dave's going first. We thought if we left it up there, <laughs> he's getting rid of those. We were joking that halfway through, we could take our easy back. Whenever you're ready, Dave, if, if, uh, whenever you're ready, would you mind just introducing your team? And then okay. Going. You're not going to? You guys go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I don't touch anything, Barry. You know me and electronics.
this microphone pointed right at your mouth. So if you, if you veer off, they'll lose you on, on, on camera. Okay. Okay, so just make sure we're not very much. Okay. Hi folks, my name is uh, Dave Nelson. I'm with Land Expressions, and we have teamed with Hazen Adell, a local artist in Spokane. We are here to celebrate um, King Cole, and together, the World's Fair Exposition. Um, both me and Hazen are from Spokane our whole lives. One of my fondest memories was in sixth grade getting my season pass to come to Expo. And as a sixth grader, it was, it turned to all fun, a uh, lot of stories, a lot of memories. Um, as we progress through time, I was fortunate to be on a team with Guy on uh, the redevelopment of Riverfront Park. And throughout that process, it was interesting that Expo was never brought up, never a driving force. And it was great to hear when this came out that we would celebrate, pay homage to King Cole and uh, the past. So there's two ways to look at this project. It's the past or the future or combine them. We chose to look a little bit in the past because we felt the King Cole Bridge had a historical value and we wanted to, to pull off of that and create our design and artistic approach from that. Um, most of the bridge we are going to utilize and utilize the structural part to support the artwork. A lot of that has to do with uh, cost analysis and making sure this is within budget. Hazen, why don't you go through some of the art? Okay, thanks. So with, as we were brainstorming about what we could do for the epicenter of Spokane, and I'll have to say, just even to this point, it's been an honor to be doing something in the epicenter of Spokane, especially as a Spokane boy. My dad was one of the art directors for Spokane Expo. I was born in 1974. And I will say that in my generation, and I know all the ones afterwards, they rarely think of Spokane as far as, far as having an expo or even what an expo is. And so after a lot of different ideas and brainstorming, I thought, well, you really have to understand that the world came to Spokane. And that's what I wanted it to be, just in your face, iconic, as far as having a big globe. And um, this, is, this globe right now is just is more of a computer mock-up. There's a, a few hand drawings of how I really want that globe to be stylized, because that's a globe that I maybe have seen before, but I really want an iconic globe um, when the globe is, and I want it to be a, you know, thinking about all the things that deserve respect um, that made Spokane Expo happen. It was King Cole. It was um, because of, of uh, the, the industry and because of the railroad and what they were able to do by being able to, I don't know how they were able to kind of remove themselves away from being the tangle of Spokane to where it is now. But um, I think that real rich history of industrialism and the railroad is something that should be celebrated in Spokane to this day. And so I really wanted some structural elements and that, and that real pure, honest, core 10, rusted steel, like what the bridge is currently made of, is that kind of core 10 steel that just, it has a nice rich patina and then it doesn't rust away after that. So I wanted to carry on that same material, but that's, that kind of material you see throughout the railroads. When I look, when I think about railroads, I think about um, just over-the-top, heavy-duty, industrial, um, and just kind of manpower. So I wanted there to be some structure that holds up a globe 
that kind of shows engineering and, and hard work. And then I just wanted, to, wanted the world to, well, the world, our Spokane, to see that Spokane hosted the World's Fair. Um, down below the globe is the icon of the Spokane Expo, and I think it's kind of surprising. I think we're all surprised that you can go through all throughout uh, Riverfront Park, and I think there is one small little under a bush, maybe an icon of, of, uh, of Spokane Expo. And you've seen it, you've, you've seen it on ashtrays and, and belt buckles, but it's kind of cool to see what it actually means. And at that time, um, what, it, what Spokane Expo, its overarching theme, was about protecting the environment, which still is very, very current today. So I think we should bring that back into the public eye and, and understand that Spokane, near nature, near perfect, we, we really embrace that. And, and what a wonderful place to showcase that because we're on the Spokane River, which a lot of people think of, I, again, speaking for my generation, it's easy for us to think, oh, you know, we've, we've caught wind that it's really polluted and it's not really appreciated, but it is truly a marvel and really makes Spokane a wonderful place for all these outsiders come and, and acknowledge the Spokane River. But being from Spokane, a lot of people just uh, look over it. And I think it, sh it needs to be highlighted. So um, underneath, underneath the globe, I, I'm not responsible for flipping through the things. It's just happening. It's fine, though. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, underneath the globe is the is the is the never-ending Mobius symbol. So it's the Mobius strip, it's, which means it's it's never-ending. A lot of people don't really realize that. So I think we should kind of resemble that. So in the in the uh, in the icon itself is actually it's going to be a 3D representation of a Mobius strip. So people get that that's where the icon comes from. Um, it's a never-ending strip. But then where are these colors from? They represent. Um, I don't know if I can I walk over there. So they represent water, air, and the plants that we live with. And uh, I was a teacher, so I can talk loud. Um, but they're on those posts. It gives us an opportunity to have three sculptures as you enter under this archway. And those are just computer models that we have been designing and designing and refining some sculptures that rep would represent um, clean air plants, and water. And what I would like to do to see in those sculptures that would be on top of those pillars would be, again, that patinaed Corten steel. But I want to carry on those colors of what they represent, the, the light blue for the water, that kind of lime green was, was the plants, and the water was air. So I would like to see um, color along with that, that patinaed steel. And where you see those, those columns there, Again, please keep in mind that those are, are rough, but we want, it, we want people to really understand as they're crossing the bridge what's, what Spokane Expo was really about. It was about, it was about that the, during the 1970s, that was when people were really starting to, to understand that uh, whales are going to go extinct at that rate that, we're, that they're going. Acid rain has already tackled North Idaho at that time. Um, deforestation is all throughout. So, yeah, like I said, that was kind of at the forefront of when people were really starting to, to digest what human activity was, uh, what, that it was taking its toll on the earth. So let's bring that back to Spokane. And I think uh, anybody could, could appreciate that. And, and if we're going to be one of those cities that can be recognized as something that's going to, as a, as, a, as a place where people are really considered about the natural environment, um, I'm all about it. Um, so... That is, that's going to be, I, yeah, okay, so you could go in there, and then I think we're, we're all going for all three teams. We really want an experience. So you want an iconic sculpture, and I want that sculpture to look really smart and clean, and um, I don't really want it, you know, I really want to show, a lot of people don't, don't look at, when you think about people from the west side, you know, they, we're a bunch of cyborgs over here in, in, uh, in eastern Washington, and we're really industrial, but we're actually, I want to have a really smart, uh, clean, really architectural looking uh, sculpture that's right again in the epicenter of Spokane. Um, and then, like I was saying, all three teams, we all want an experience. So, this walkway, we have so many opportunities to uh, again celebrate the history of, of uh, the railroad. We can look at the 
how how important it was with uh, with our native populations that have been here for over 10,000 years and are and are still very current as well. And so all that can be done throughout this walkway experience. So once you pass this bridge, you go into a walkway experience where uh, there's a bunch of uh, interpretive signage and uh, wayfinding, and I think we can. We might be able to find, keep going. So that, that's kind of, the, if we go back, this is again just a, a quick hand-drawn sketch, but this is something that I'm looking, looking forward to making for the globe. It's a, it's a globe that's, again, not the kind of globe that you would ever see anywhere else. Um, Cortan steel and then the continents. I would really like to see either polished dark bronze or polished stainless steel. And... Uh, we'll go to that walkway. So this begins our walkway experience. We have signage. Uh, I wanted to use, I think we all wanted to use uh, columnar basalt just because that is, again, a real strong component of Spokane geology. And it withstands the test of time. And yeah, so meaning it's kind of bomb proof no matter what, uh, no matter what characters are downtown. Um, and then right there with the, that particular uh, destination, that's where we can celebrate these founders, these really important founders of, of, uh, of Spokane, especially during the World Expo. I will say Tom Foley wrote me a letter of recommendation one time. I got the job, but yeah, so it was a pretty good deal. So yeah, uh, we'll have that natural columnar basalt, and then that will, we'd like to see a polished uh, top to it, again, giving that, that clean, smart look. And then with that polished top, we can have images of those, of those uh, founders of, of this, or the real predominant, prominent members of, of Spokane at, and the people that made Expo happen. Um, some, some of those columns can be more sculptural and, and be, again, be made of, out of Corten to kind of carry that theme throughout. Um, and I, we really wanted to stick with really natural materials to work with. Again, basalt and that steel, we really didn't, you know, I think a lot of times we, nowadays we get encouraged to do things like make fiberglass and epoxy and stuff. And all that stuff has a, has a date on it. You kind of know exactly when it was made. And I'd like to have something be really timeless. Um, and so these are some of the ideas for that, that uh, wayfinding. So slabs of basalt, and then these are things that we can really uh, highlight uh, what's happening in Spokane and what was happening in Spokane. These are some big signs. I guess you can kind of talk more about some of the wayfinding. Yeah, the, the wayfinding, we're going to target... Uh, the Spokane Falls and the story with uh, uh, the Spokane tribe. The other one is kind of the, a short history teaching lesson on uh, Expo 74. There's a lot to that. We got to create it, we write it. And uh, then the last one is celebrating, um, I don't know, celebrating the removal of the railroad. I discuss that process, which, as we read into it, and what I remember, it, it was pretty monumentous to do that. So. For, for these wayfinding, I guess the interpretive signage, we would really like to make each one of those almost like a, like a monument. Sorry, okay. So we would like to see, you can see the size of them. They're roughly about seven to eight feet tall. And when you see it, you notice it. And when you know that there's going to be five or six of those that, are, that have uh, information on them, you know that you're there, you're at the spot, and there's something to, to take in at, the, at each one of those monuments along, the, along this pathway. King Cole Way, as uh, Guy mentioned, it's there, but nobody really knows it. Um, we didn't want to do street signs or wayward signs. We want to do a subtle approach. We use the Mobius. It would, the asphalt would be ground and the paint would be inset in and use the Expo colors. Each uh, small ribbon 
of it would be oriented the way it is in the, the Mobius. It would get more um, intense at intersections and bleed out, but you would always see one as you were walking. So I think I think we have a 3D a little, a little yeah. video. Oh, okay. Can help me, Barry. This would probably be a good opportunity if there was any questions as well. And I think it, with this sculpture, I really appreciate the King Cole Bridge as, I mean, it's so proper 1974 architecture, and it's, uh, it's pretty magical. So I didn't want to make anything that really took away from the, the overall shape and the presentation that that, the, that bridge has always had. So if anything, I just want to compliment that, that architecture that already exists. Are you supposed to have music to this? With all that interpretive signage, there's so much opportunity to have storyboards and um, just a lot of a lot of literature and information for people to kind of explore. And that could be done more in detail with these more monument monument type signage. So, yeah, if there's any questions, we'd love to hear them. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Hazen. Thank, Thank you. you. Very nice. And as we have ALSC come up, feel free uh, to ask any questions or comments. Of course, like I said, there's comment cards out front. Uh, you can uh, feel free to ask questions on the WebEx as well.
Hi, my name is Troy Bishop. I'm with ALSC Architects. I'm a, a partner and uh, something that we're really proud about this project is the A in ALSC's Tom Atkinson. And he was the master planning architect for Expo. And he had a lot of interactions with King Cole. And so there's a kind of returning cycle that we're very proud to be a part of this and uh, very excited that potentially our firm could uh, introduce an art piece like this. Also I wanna introduce Tina. My name is Tina Johansson. I am an associate principal with ALSC and uh, very honored to be here today. I'm Mike Terrell, landscape architect and principal with MTLA. Um, I've uh, enjoyed Riverfront Park ever since we moved here in, in 1990, having lunch downtown and, and even today, you know, it changes every moment uh, with, the, with the weather and the light. It's an enjoyable place to go. And this is a project that will really add detail to, to the park. So at a very high level, the things that we've talked about with the stakeholders, is this project will honor the past and the past much beyond Spokane as we know it. It'll engage the senses, and it'll be for someone who, who really doesn't even care about the past. They just want to have an experience in the park. So if they want to take a selfie, this icon needs to be produced. And then it will reflect kind of what our community wants to do as we go into the future. And so it isn't about any one moment in time, and it really is kind of the spirit that we found about King Cole. So our art piece is called Reflections. And I'm going to turn it over to Tina to talk a little about the person that kind of triggered this and that we're uh, remembering. There's been a, a lot of things said about King Cole today, so I think we're all fairly familiar. Um, <clears throat> King Cole came from a um, big Irish Catholic family, and he was a very spiritual person with a great conviction and he didn't want to take no for an answer. So he was just the right man to come here to Spokane for the great task at hand. He had a degree in business and administration and law, and he also had this great love for urban planning and a thriving downtown. So he believed the heart of the community was the downtown. And this unwavering unwavering um, belief and love for people um, also showed itself in the fact that he knew quite a few languages. He could speak French, German, Italian, Russian, Spanish, and Latin. And this came as a great bonus as he traveled around to recruit the world to come to Little Spokane for Expo 74. So our art piece, piece is called Reflections. And as Troy mentioned, it's about the past, reflecting the history. It's about the present and it's about the future. And um, as the Native Americans came here long before anybody else, they really enjoyed the beauty and the bounty of the Spokane River. And when James Glover came in 19, oh, excuse me, 1873, and he saw this, um, he fell in love as well. However, the river suffered um, through the uh, industrialization and the growth of Spokane. And so by the 1900s, as you saw in some of those pictures that Barry showed, it was really almost buried in all this progress that they had. And, um, Spokane Unlimited uh, was formed by a great uh, deal of uh, concerned citizens. And in 63, King Cole came here as um, the executive director for this group of people. And um, they were wondering how they were gonna clean this up, how they were gonna get the sewer out of the river, save the environment, make it a place where everybody could come and enjoy it again and, and make this, this great heart of Spokane. So impossible list of goals in a crazy short timeline, but King Cole was man. 
So when it comes to an art piece, uh, these are when you, as far as this collaboration, you've gotten our entire firm of 40 people, plus the collaboration with our consultants, including Mike. We've had a lot of conversations about what is this art piece. And what happens with that is we almost, it is a process of editing. A lot of ideas kept adding more and more to the bridge. But when we got down to the essence of the expo symbol, it really is air, earth, and water. And so what we got from that is that when you have such a beautiful place, do we need to put another object in space? Or do we really want to put something that can help frame it and make you think about being there more? We went through a lot of explorations. Uh, we probably have about 15 different explorations. And some were really cool, but they didn't quite serve as all that the stakeholders wanted to. There's a lot of information that they'd like to provide for people. And so what is a simple device that truly people can reflect on? And so it was almost this notion of a civic scale mirror slicing through the bridge to engage both the river, the passerby, and the sky. And so that really is kind of the, the main idea on the upper right that really stood the test of how we could collect all of these wants for this art piece, but still keep it singular enough to be art. Here's an, a bird's eye view. We've also heard from the group that it would be great to literally have a statue of King Cole. So where would that want to be and be appropriate? And so we talked even about that being on Havermill Island because on the other side, we already have two other sculptures of people in different scales. So we didn't want to get too many collections of bronze folks hanging out on one side. So when you look at this image, it really shows how from a structural bay, there'll be these timbers will be removed. And this mirror, essentially the stainless steel device slides through and starts to interact with the water. It also, We've heard about that one of the, the major thoroughfares into the park does not quite collect all the guests that are at the hotels, the conventions. And so this really does want to be a pathway that accelerates you into the park and starts down King Cole Way. And so this, this to us is the beginning of that. So how do we come up with a composition that you see today? Well, we, we looked at King Cole Memorial Way and started to abstract that as a graphic that we could have this etched history on this mirror. This also becomes a graphic you'll see a little bit later about how we can curate information along the entire pathway that is a kind of living information. You'll we'll get there in a little bit. Again, there was a lot of expectations for what this art piece does. So you can see our site plan on the top, how we start to abstract that with the 74 Expo symbol and then insert that through the bridge. What's great, you can see in the model, is in some perspectives, this art piece goes away with the stainless steel going to the edges. So it literally can be a bit passive until you start to get drawn to it, and then you can start to interact with it. We love the fact that somebody could, you know, just be, again, taking a selfie or spending a little time pausing with each reflection that we've talked about with the group. Uh, you'll see again how many different reflections we've talked about. Also, there's this kind of kick plate and this sense of a void in which it slides down and you can see how this art piece reflects the river, which really is the whole reason for the park. In that, you'll see here, is there's a grate there, so you can't actually fall through, um, but you can start to interact with the water and then it rises up against above the piers to really start to play with the sky. Um, also looking at lighting schemes, this is a, our, how we're starting to think about working with our consultants and making this real. And so it literally sleeves onto the bridge and also doesn't degrade the bridge as far as a historical reference, a historical bridge. So here's the model for people at home who can't see what we have here. And it really does start to show how when someone's viewing in there, that becomes an interactive part of the art from someone coming up to the art piece. Also, you can see how this pathway in which we've kind of set up for the future nodes on King Cole Way really is that composition. 
So you can start to see this framework in which we peeled the bridge back, and that starts to be a bit of a table of contents for your experience down King Cole Way. So now the pathway has acknowledged all of these nodes in which it's potential for future art pieces. And I want Mike to just talk about how this integrates into the park. So we identified eight individual nodes or for the fly fishermen in the house, those eddies along the pathway that you might stop and catch a fish or catch some information. And, and those spots are, the table is set for those spots by the art piece in the, in the middle of the bridge. And so that pathway and the information there is carried out into the first one, which is the King Cole statuary, which is really the commemoration. And then from there, it carries on into what is the way that is King Cole? What are the things that grew out of what King Cole envisioned for Spokane when this whole process started? And the first thing we come to is a native area. So on the right in the former Boeing Amphitheater, um, there's an opportunity really to reclaim a portion of that amphitheater and maybe have a boardwalk that, that peels around and encompasses a camas meadow. So you have an opportunity to bring the truly the native, some of the restoration that has gone on in the river, right into a meadow of camas, which most people don't see on a daily basis or in the spring. They just see it on their way screaming down 195 to, to Pullman or headed out of town. So it's an opportunity to have a really, truly native plant experience. Again, that, that plant, water, and air portion. The next one is celebration at the high point of the amphitheater where you can have a really celebratory opportunity in those areas where there's performance. So that's one of the key things of the way that King Cole laid out for the community, is having a place for performance. The next one really is the Expo 74, located strategically, unabashedly, next to the pavilion. So you really say, this is Expo 74, this is what it was all about, and this is what grew out of Expo 74. The next one is the railroads. A key component of that is so many people come to Spokane and they go, well, it's always been like this, right? And it hasn't. You really have to show people what it was for them to truly appreciate what we have. So showing them the railroads, showing them what has changed is very important. The next one is the falls. And the falls, the interpretation and the experience of the falls is really important, laying that groundwork before folks get to the falls themselves because historically before all the background noise, you could hear the falls in the spring clear across the West Plains out into the, to Eastern Washington. So telling those stories of what the falls were like before the railroads, before Expo, it carries both the past and then into the future what it can be in the future as well. And the next one. I'll, sp I'll speak about partnerships. And okay. it's strategically next to the Tom Atkinson Memorial uh, art piece there. And what we really want to do there is create a space to understand how many businesses, how many community members needed to come together to even make this happen. And so partnerships, again, a little plug for ALSC, is right there by the Tom Atkinson Falls. And, and that really, again, carrying on the theme, that is the King Cole way, was the partnerships to make things happen. Because without the partnerships that, that he created, the, the relationships that were created in the time building up to Expo 74 never would have happened. And then final is the industrial. And strategically located at the beginning, so if you start from the west end at the Washington Water Power Building, one of the things that's really important is interpret the industrial capability of the river and the industrial history of the river, how important it is uh, to have clean en energy from hydropower and how that might be going forward too. So again, it's the past of water power and why um, why the flour mill was built on the river, why other mills were built on the river and the, and the power of the river, but also the, the future of hydropower and in that portion as well. And so that's the King Cole way. And so what we really have talked about is creating a framework for future art to come in for each one of these important things that you need to know about how Expo and how we even got this park. 
And so again, rather than doing a mini-me of reflections, it's an opportunity to now have another artist come on. And we've really talked about how this could really uh, strengthen an art walk for the ones who are interested in art, but also in each one of these will be the information that we can continually add to throughout the years through a QR code and people literally just using their devices to get that information. So as I, in closing, I really want to thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this competition. We really believe in our art piece that it, it is just the, the, right, the right piece to draw people to the park and accelerate them on Havermill Island. We also believe that Havermill Island is different than a lot of the other pathways as it's organic and it's the one that stays on the island. So this is an image of what happens at Reflections at Night. And what we've talked about is this is kind of the dark side of the park. And so when you have an event at the Opera House or you have uh, something going on at the Convention Center, the lights are already on when Reflections is lit from, it, from inside and also interacting with the water. So again, how do we have that simplistic single device that has a lot of meaning? And uh, I think that's taken all 40 of us at our firm to get down to something to its essence like this. So I encourage any uh, questions and uh, we're just very excited about where this could go. Thank you, Troy, Tina, Mike. That was a wonderful presentation. Any questions from uh, the audience here or at home? Very nice, well done. How'd you make that? 3D printer or something? The old fashioned way. Um, if you haven't come up to see the model, I encourage you to do so. I think Hal in the back there would probably love to see the little statue of King Cole. Um, but nonetheless, uh, all three teams, ALSC, the Burger Partnership and John Fleming, and also um, Land Expressions, which is Dave Nelson, uh, Tom Pratt, and of course, Hazen Adele, uh, our local artist here. And um, I think you can catch Hazen on the Discovery Channel every now and then on his wild adventures. Um, but I want to say thank you for coming, and I very much appreciate it. Please leave some feedback. Uh, we would really appreciate it and um, uh, go straight to our committee and to our park board. Thank you. Thank you.